Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 25th of May with me, Patrick Munley. The rally in risk assets is proving a little slower going now, especially as the turn in COVID-19 curves and lockdown exit strategies have been factored in. Instead, now investors are left to guess how hard President Trump is prepared to press China in a fragile election year, with a current focus on potential US sanctions in response to new national security laws in Hong Kong. This story may dominate the early part of this week, especially in the final few days of the China's National People's Congress. After Monday's Memorial Day public holiday in the US, the US calendar gets into gear with the Fed uh, Beige Book, uh, the first re revision to first quarter uh, 2020 GDP and consumer sentiment for May. Markets expect the GDP release to be revised a little lower, down from that first minus 4.8% quarter over quarter annualised print, and the market to remain to look for fresh US stimulus, which may be several weeks away. From a technical perspective, the uh, dollar index found support in the middle of the range, and we've now got a close on Friday above the monthly pivot. Uh, whilst we defend Friday's lows, we can look for a retest of the range resistance uh, 100.30 to 100.50 and we'll see there if we get further bearish reversal patterns to, uh, to set fresh dollar shorts. However, if we do get a close through the range resistance, then I'm looking for a, a test of the equality objective at 101.30 before lower. Whilst we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. Gold duly tested its equality objective at the 1766 area, and we did find um, fresh supply in the market. A bearish reversal on Thursday saw some consolidation trade on Friday. Whilst we hold this 1766 area, we can expect a retest of the minimum of the 1700 area. If bids don't develop, uh, in advance of the 1688 area, then we could see a deeper correction back down to test support to 1650. The euro had been finding a little more support recently, buoyed by the Merkel-Macron EU recovery plan. This coming Wednesday, the European Commission will try to convert this plan into proposed action. While there will be pushback from the more frugal members of the EU, markets suspect that the plan will be greeted well. Other events this week include German IFO on Monday and ECB Chief Economist Philip Lane speaking at an IIF virtual conference on Tuesday. On balance, uh, market watchers expect the ECB will announce a top-up to its PET programme at the 4th of June ECB meeting and remarks from the Chief Economist in that direction could be seen as Euro-supportive via the fiscal risk channel. From a technical perspective, uh, Euro traded up into the 110 uh, resistance area and we did see profit taking and we're now moving back down to test the midpoint of the range. If we can defend the 108.50 area, then bull, the bullish target um, on the interim basis is still that 110.50. However, if we lose 108.50, look for a quick move back down to test 108. If sufficient demand isn't seen there, then we could anticipate a deeper pullback to actually test down to the year state lows at 106.30 and the interim equality objective. It's a very quiet week on the UK data front, uh, with the market already pencilling in Bank of England interest rates to start turning negative by year end. The near-term negative impact from the expectations of the looser monetary policy is already started to weigh on sterling. The next main hurdle for sterling should be the negative news flow on the UK-EU trade negotiations and the likely no extension of the UK-EU transition period. As limited risk premium is priced into the sterling spot market, speculative shorts not being material and the sterling implied volatility curve shows signs of complacency. The likely non-extension of the transition period and the associated negative news flow should be weighing on sterling. As such, we saw bearish reversal patterns from the 122.50 interim resistance, we now look for price to test down to the uh, 
uh, confluent area of the 120 zone. And I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns in and around this area to set long positions, targeting a move back up into the middle of the range towards 124. In Japan, in the week ahead, we'll see Japanese data updates on Tokyo CPI, jobs, retail sales, and industrial production. They should all be pretty soft. Um, Tokyo department stores uh, sales fell 76% year over year in April. And, uh, and we probably want to keep a focus on whether Japanese authorities are actually doing enough to support the, the economy. Uh, the dollar yen has been somewhat resilient um, and it's probably been caused by the US dollar funding issues where Japanese banks are still drawing down $9 billion a day in the seven day US dollar swap auctions with the Fed. So from a technical perspective, I'm looking for the dollar yen to make a test of this 108.30 area where I'd be looking for fresh supply and if we can get some bearish daily reversal patterns up here, then I'd be setting short positions targeting a move down to the long awaited 104.50, which is the primary equality objective. However, if we don't see the anticipated supply at 108.50, look for a move up to retest range resistance at 109.30. In Australia, uh, the news is really about Australia and China who've entered into a diplomatic spat lately with the Australian government pushed for an investigation on the origins of COVID-19 and possible responsibility of the Chinese government. In what many identified as retaliation, China levied tariffs on Australia, uh, barley, and is reportedly working on a list of other Australian exports to potentially target with duties. If iron ore and coal were hit, by the protectionist measures, the negative implications for the Australian economy and the Australian dollar could be considerable. Markets had shown some complacency around rising tensions between China and some developed economies lately. Now the risk of a new geopolitical turmoil and possibly a new trade war starts to be priced in and recent developments in Hong Kong may further unnerve investors. The Australian dollar still has um, some relatively strong fundamentals, one of which is being a good commodity backdrop thanks to its extra resilient iron ore prices, largely boosted from chi strong Chinese demand. However, Australia-China tensions mean that the Australian dollar um, may see bears, bearish spirits re-emerging um, and, uh, and a pickup in volatility. We did see some bearish reversals in the Australian dollar, um, but as we hold the 6450 area, I'm still looking for a test of the 67 handle, which is the primary equality objective. And once we get up here, then I will be looking for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions, ultimately move to set up a move to retest the 62 area as support. If we don't find the anticipated support at 64.50 area, look for a move back down into the 63.60 zone watching for bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions for the 67 target. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 25th of May.